When students feel that they have a command of what they know and the skills to apply their knowledge to addressing and solving problems in their own lives, then we have done something called deeper learning. I think it has always been true uh, going all the way back to Brown v. Board of Education and moving right up to the present, that we've been in a national struggle to try to make sure that the good stuff is available to uh, all kids. I do think that the last decade or so, we have witnessed a qualitative improvement in the standards that are driving the system. We have better tests, better assessments, and we have uh, better tools. So we've come a long way, but here's where we need still to go. It's one thing to prove that schools can do this. It's another to demonstrate that the system can actually change. When you take a job like this, uh, one of the things you need to find out is what other people think about the, you know, the work the foundation has been up to. So uh, I am in the midst of talking to uh, and listening to as many people as I can. I absolutely want to hear from our grantees. I'm interested to know if our support's been impactful, you know, you, you know, how helpful have we actually been? I've been curious about the connections between uh, open education resources and pedagogy or practice. There are, I think, communities we have not reached as fully as we need to. And I'm talking about uh, the civil rights uh, groups, I'm talking about the interest groups uh, and advocacy groups um, whose work at the state and local level especially uh, matters. I would love to hear from teachers and frankly, I would really be interested to hear from students. This is really the moment to help us think more clearly about what we need to pay attention to looking forward. I think, in reality, lifting ourselves up by our bootstraps and personal resilience and perseverance have never fully explained the success that any of us have enjoyed. It turns out that institutions like schools matter even more for both leveling the playing field and creating the proxies for wealth and advantage I'm pretty sure that at conception, the assumption about our work was a sort of a rising tide lifts all boats strategy. We are now at a point where we have to kind of confront this reality and be prepared to work even more aggressively where the talent is uneven and the resources vary and we have to be able to work in places where the challenge is the greatest. The last thing I intended to do was actually work in education. And when I graduated from the University of Michigan, I was focused on issues of economic policy and public finance. And I actually backed into education through that door when I was given a fellowship by the Ford Foundation to go to Teachers College to study the politics of education and the economics of education. A lot of opportunities that I've had can only be explained by the care and interest of committed teachers, uh, by a system that at times was uh, resistant to a person of color, but at others helped to adopt policies that acted, it acted affirmatively, right? One day I'm in a college uh, receiving support that I could not afford, you know, a decade later, I'm running a federal agency that is actually uh, supporting uh, the very kinds of things that supported me. So there's a big 
dividend that accrues to a sense of generosity and a progressive view of education. And I think I'm living proof of that story. And it's what's, I think, so um, satisfying and rewarding about running the education program here at Hewlett that I have ways of making that same kind of difference for others.